Emi Batuzumab is a monoclonal antibody directed against MET. Now, MET can be a primary driver of some subtypes of lung cancer, particularly MET exon 14 mutated and possibly some highly amplified versions of MET. But it's also a mechanism of acquired resistance in those who have an EGFR mutation who are initially treated with an EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor and then develop acquired resistance. So we know about T790M, which is about 60% of cases, but this is another slice of the acquired resistance pie. In this study, um, patients were enriched to have EGFR mutations. They weren't formally tested up front. They were based on what's called Jackman criteria, so they had to derive clinical benefit from an EGFR TKI. Then they developed acquired resistance, and then they were enriched for those who might have MET as their mechanism of activation. And their enrichment was looking at MET expression by immunohistochemistry. Now in the study, whether you got emibetuzumab alone or emibetuzumab and kept the EGFR TKI going on, the response rate was very low and there didn't seem to be a big difference in the PFS. So I think this is telling us that, you know, we're not identifying the right population enough here, both because we didn't just do it in EGFR mutations, and secondly, almost certainly the, the enrichment method for those driven by MET in the acquired resistance setting, we didn't set the bar high enough by just using what they called MET diagnostic high. So I don't think it's a failure of the drug, I think it's a failure of the approach. And I think we could go back in and say, well, what if we looked at people who were super high expressors of MET or some other method of looking at MET activation as the acquired resistance?